In January of 2023, cinemas were invaded by Megan, a horror comedy about a feisty and murderous android companion that brought a fun new spin to the killer doll genre. While the film was a surprise hit at the box office, it had been in development for quite a while, dating back to the pre-pandemic days of 2018. Intriguingly, its director, Jared Johnstone, had only one feature film under his belt up until that point. That feature was Housebound, a twisty, humorous thriller that deftly combined chills with laughs. Megan producers James Wan and Jason Blum were both thoroughly impressed by the tightrope the movie walked and found John Stone was perhaps the only man for the job of bringing the bonkers Megan concept to life. Turns out their faith in him was rewarded as the dancing doll racked up over $170 million at the worldwide box office, earning her a sequel almost immediately. But we're here to look back at the project that made Megan possible, John Stone's funny freakout housebound, one of the best horror movies you never saw. Obviously, we're going to be spoiling some of Housebound's bigger plot twists, so do be advised that you should best watch it first, then come back here to enjoy us lavish praise upon the flick, which starts off with a truly frightening scenario, moving back in with your mother and stepfather. You jagaloons! You're failures! Failures! Hey, you're embarrassing yourself, you geriatric fuck! That's the fate that has befallen Kylie Bucknell, a 20-something delinquent who finds herself under house arrest after a ludicrously failed attempt at ATM theft. Kylie is a sullen, surly young lady with a chip on her shoulder the size of Auckland. Her mum, Miriam, is a well-meaning sort, if not a little excitable. And stepdad Graham is almost as hard to read as she is. Safe to say, this will be no stay-at-home vacation, but rather a true endurance test. Kylie very well may have preferred prison to the creaky confines of her childhood home. However, it's not just going to be endless days on the couch watching meaningless telly for Kylie. Miriam has a rather unfortunate surprise for her daughter. The house is currently haunted. In fact, it may always have been haunted, as when she was young, Kylie was convinced herself that she saw apparitions, memories she's since blacked out. Of course, there are the usual mysterious disturbances in the middle of the night, creaks and house sounds, the so-called haunting presenting itself slowly, but surely. It takes a lot to convince a cynic like Kylie, who's more apt to believe her mother is equal parts bored and superstitious, than take any of this nonsense seriously. Ah, but it isn't long before it becomes clear to Kylie that something is indeed afoot in the old homestead. Getting grabbed on the leg by an unseen intruder will have that effect, as will having a creepy animatronic bear placed in the shower with you. Gotta think that guy's related to Megan in some way? Pretty soon, the evidence is impossible to ignore. But is it an unhappy spirit? Or something even more sinister? Is it even something to be feared at all? With the help of an eager amateur ghost hunter, who is also conveniently the guy who makes sure she doesn't try to skip down, Kylie and Miriam endeavor to get to the bottom of just what's happening within that house. And when we say, within that house, we mean it. While watching Housebound, it's easy to see why producers James Wan and Jason Blum, and even that legendary Kiwi Peter Jackson, were impressed with John Stone's work and pictured bigger things for him. Balancing comedy and horror is never for the faint of heart, and Gerard does an expert job of crafting a thriller that's both creepy and amusing. Sometimes, it's even downright quaint. You might get an emblem vibe from the flip, as it certainly calls to mind those special Spielberg-produced thrill rides from the 80s that seamlessly blend spooky subject matter with enthusiastic humor and heart. As a writer, he presents us with a great premise. What if you literally couldn't leave your haunted home because you'd be breaking the law? And as a director, he proves he's got a gift for visual storytelling with a steady supply of interesting camera movements and angles. Housebound is never boring to look at, and the cinematography and production design teams deserve kudos for delivering such an appealing looking movie, considering it rarely ever leaves the confines of the house. The influence of gothic horror movies of the past is frequently obvious, as shadows lurk everywhere and dark corridors present themselves with startling regularity. Especially noteworthy is that, despite some grim subject matter at the core of the plot, Housebound is rather lighthearted and easy to watch. One of those horror movies that will appeal to aficionados as well as people who don't normally enjoy the genre. That's not to say it's toothless. Indeed, there are, uh, lots of teeth flying around this film. 
You don't normally see dentures being used as a major plot point in a horror movie, but that's just how John Stone rolls. And admirably, there's very little gore or violence in this movie. Well, okay, there are a few stabbings here and there and maybe a mauled face, but the major bloodletting comes courtesy of an exploding head at the end that has to be seen to be believed. What a show-stopping moment that is. John Stone makes some risky choices early on, most of them regarding our main character. What's rather nifty here is that Kylie is anything but a likable protagonist in the early going. Sour, pussed, and ungrateful, she's still acting like an angsty teenager even though she's well into her 20s. And before long, she's all but taken over the house and treating her mom and stepdad like unwanted roommates. John Stone, of course, does this purposely, giving Kylie a tough, unflappable veneer so that when things really start going bump in the night, her defenses are broken down and she gradually grows into a character you care about. And if she's scared, you know that things are going downhill. It doesn't hurt that Morgana O'Reilly is really just perfect in the role, imbuing Kylie with a snarky sense of humor and a give no shits attitude that will be like catnip if you're into ladies who look like they can kick your ass. I know I am. Like plenty of notable actors before her, Morgana cut her teeth on the Australian soap opera Neighbors, but even if you're familiar with that series, you'll have no trouble associating her with this role right from the get-go. So effortlessly does she make Kylie her own. But the whole cast is uniformly excellent. Rima T. Wayata is completely lovable as the put-upon mom. She hits all the right notes and will hopefully have you reaching for the phone to call your own mom in no time, provided you don't already live with her. Glenn Paul Waru provides solid comic relief as a security officer who just so happens to be a big believer in the supernatural, and his addition to the increasingly weird proceedings is very welcome, especially for those who enjoy a little amateur ghost hunting on the side. The moment where it's revealed a presumably skeptic Amos is actually all in on this haunted house stuff is a priceless one. And very special notice must be given to Cameron Rhodes, who plays Kylie's gentle therapist, Dennis. Initially, what seems like a minor supporting character becomes so much more intriguing as the movie enters its third act. And let's just say Rhodes has a hell of a time going over the top when we discover Dennis has some skeletons of his own in the closet. Then there's the other member of the cast, the elephant in the room, or the man on the walls, if you prefer. Here comes a spoiler. It's ultimately revealed that there's no ghost in the mix, nor is it a frightful intruder intent on making life hell for the Bucknells. No, it's just a poor soul named Eugene, a former mental patient traumatized by a murder from the past and relegated to years of solitary confinement within the walls of the Bucknell house. Eugene ends up being a very sweet character, in his own unglamorous way, and he certainly ends up being useful to his hosts when their backs are literally up against the wall. Putting an extra charming capper on the film, we learn that Eugene will continue to live with the Bucknells as a most unusual house guest. And while I don't know if I personally would feel comfortable with such an odd living arrangement, it does the heart good to know Eugene and his surrogate family will go on looking after each other. Though one has to assume drawing Kylie while she's in the bathtub is no longer permitted. If there's a complaint to be lodged against Housebound, it's that it might be just a tad on the long side, with the second half devoting a lot of time to exposition and red herrings. 110 minutes is a touch lengthy for a horror comedy, but honestly, this is a minor gripe as John Stone keeps things moving with characters we're genuinely invested in entering suspenseful, sometimes harrowing situations. He manages to pepper the film with several standout sequences. Let's put it this way, whenever Kylie goes about exploring on her own, you're guaranteed an exciting experience. It might be slightly controversial to say, but Housebound belongs in the same conversation as other great horror comedies of the 21st century, alongside titles like Shaun of the Dead and What We Do in the Shadows. It may not have made quite the cultural impact as those movies, but it's just about as much of a pleasure to behold. An unorthodox story, well told by a very talented filmmaker, here's hoping Housebound's profile continues to rise in the film community, especially in the wake of Megan Fever. Heck, maybe Housebound will get a sequel of its own one day. Would be plenty interesting to see what's going on in that house after all this time. <laughs>